Okay, so I'm about to begin the adventure of building the window plug for the rear uh, window of this car. Uh, the first thing I did was um, protected the back surface of the glass with uh, some of the spark arrestor paper. I also uh, took this uh, 332 C channel rubber that came as a packing protector on the last project's windshield and just put that around the perimeter to protect the edges from chipping. I'll uh, take that thickness into account when I design my surround uh, and window bed for this. I've got the actual bead coming uh, as far as the um, the bead that fits on the back side of this uh, for the final installation, which is a quarter inch thick and requires about a quarter of an inch uh, space around the side of the opening. As you can see, this is uh, this is what this looks like. It's got a little lip over here. That makes up takes up the space between the glass and the uh, the bed, uh, but what you can't see is underneath this on the other side of this black uh, frit, uh, there's a uh, quarter inch thick uh, self self adhesive uh, band that's a part of this that sticks to the back side of the glass before you install the glass to both protect the uh, the edge and uh, set it up off the uh, off the actual bed so that there's a space for the uh, urethane to spread out underneath here without smashing it flat and making it like a flattened peanut butter sandwich, if you will. Under here, there's just uh, some quarter inch spacers and then the rest is, of it's relying on a, a bed of urethane. So uh, the rear glass is done the same way. It has um, this uh, flexible little lip here that rolls up into the bed. So I'll have to create my uh, my bed that uh, so that it accommodates this uh, the speed. Anyway, let me get started. Okay, in order to double check the depth of the bed that I'm going to be replicating, taking this piece of sheet metal and uh, putting it behind this little flap and dropping it all the way down till it hits the base of the bed. And then I've gone ahead and I've marked it. So you can see it's a pretty deep bed. It's almost three quarters of an inch right there. It's probably a, a light three quarters of an inch from the top surface here. Now the glass is not 100% flush. It's designed to be just slightly below this rim here, which that's the way it's supposed to be for a flush glass, so to speak. And uh, so that's our uh, that's going to be our measurement for the side of our our surround. All right, so um, I already have that uh, rubber U-channel protecting the edge of the glass, which is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I've got some three sixteenths inch plastic that I've cut to the outer perimeter of the glass, actually to the outer perimeter of the rubber U-channel, which is also three is about a sixteenth of an inch off the edge of the glass. So the three sixteenths plus the sixteenths adds a quarter of an inch to the back side of the glass which gives me what I'll need to uh, project the shape in to create the window bed. Now it's not just a piece of flat stock there's banked edges you can see and this is tilted in and then it's tilted in more on the corners and then tilted in again so this had to be cut and fit and sanded uh, to get so that when it laid on here it complied with the glass as the glass wants it to uh, uh, take these corners in uh, over here. So anyway, I've got to add a, another 3 sixteenths of an inch to the whole perimeter here before I can start uh, getting with my uh, sheet metal work. Okay, uh, that took a little while, but I had to uh, uh, do a lot of relief cutting here, both vertically and across this area here, as you can see, in order to get this to go wrap around this corner correctly. Um, but anyway, so this is all filled in all the way around. So this uh, is um, a 3 16 plus the 16th of the rubber that's against the glass, so that should be a quarter inch spacing all the way around. So now that I have all that done, I can start uh, messing around with the uh, actual window bed itself. Okay, I've started uh, building this window bed now, 
and I'm starting with the most uh, difficult part, which is the uh, the corners. Uh, it's uh, too complex of a shape to really try to shrink and stretch this. In other words, bend the piece of metal and then try to shrink it and stretch it to get it to follow all these contours, especially over here because this is really a tight. I mean, it can be done, but this is a really tight, tight corner. So as you would shrink it, it would roll this part in, and then you'd have to keep beating it out with a manually with a hammer. So the best thing to do in this circumstance is to just build the corners independent. Uh, and the way I've done that is... Um, you know, to take a pattern, um, paper pattern, lay it on top of the corner like that, get it aligned just like that. And then once that's done, I get the metal piece. This is 70 thousandths mild steel and just lay this in so that it follows that contour. Just keep tweaking it until it just drops down in there and just sits without any, any uh, pressure. And then come around make another paper pattern to band the outside that fits this you can see it's not actually a straight piece it's a it's a smile at any rate so and then you end up with a finished corner that looks like this um, and this is where the glass will lay on the inside once it's all done thought I'd show you that all right I'm starting to work on this intermediate piece which is again just a um, piece of the 70 thousandths it's folded three quarters by an inch one inch for being the bed and three quarters of an inch being the depth um, from the top surface of the sheet metal the finished sheet metal anyway I'm shrinking it and stretching it in order to get it to comply with this uh, lower surface that I've projected up with these spacers the difficult part is it's upside down so as I'm going along I have to use a mirror to make sure that it's closed up against that top portion because that's the actual portion that's going to show the spacing between the glass and and the um, and the body of the car. So that has to be consistent. It can't be going in and out, as you can see. Right, you probably can't see it here because it's black, but you can see this is where you can see the uh, the edge of that is worked off. So I have to pull that in a little bit more. Uh, in addition to that, uh, as you shrink and stretch, sometimes it it'll open up this was bent to 90 degrees initially but it'll move a little bit on you so i'm taking and i've got this uh 90 degree piece of wood and i've got a little uh, relief um, bevel on the bottom so it fits neatly in here and as i'm uh, working it i'm double checking to make sure that it maintains square along this edge here as, as you can see here um it's not quite square so i have to take the hammer put it in the, the vise and keep tapping it down make sure that this whole thing stays uniform as I fit it to this rim here because we don't want it to all look wiggly and have a bunch of work filling it in with Bondo if we can help it uh, there's going to be some adjustment obviously but uh, the closer we can get it in the steel the better off we're going to be all right so this is what the uh, window bed looks like it's upside down obviously on the glass uh, that's everything stitched together welded up ground off cleaned up now I've got to start trying to fit it to the car <clears throat> one of the challenges I've got to make sure that I it it stays in this flat plane so I've got to figure out how to cross brace it so that it doesn't twist on me when I'm putting it in the car is to create low spots in other words right now I could I could lift one corner and the rest of it stays on so you can see how it would be very easy if I got it in the in the car uh, a little bit twisted how this would not sit flat in the glass uh, with the glass in it uh, anyway uh, I got to figure out what I'm going to crisscross that with and then go on from there all right so I've just uh, gone ahead and used some 5 8 tubing uh, square tubing to uh, crisscross it and tack to the corners so that it doesn't rack while I'm trying to figure out how to uh, get it installed in the car All right, with the uh, X uh, member in here holding everything stable, as far as the frame's concerned, I added these um, flanges on the inside here, temporary flanges for now. Um, I've been tacked in. Uh, and I also made some drill holes on the inside here. I'll cut the tacks loose. I don't know if you can see the drill holes from here. Probably not. Anyway. There's two drill holes on the inside of the flange, and what's going to happen there is, is I'm going to slot these flanges so that I can adjust this up and down. And the reason for that is I want 
to be able to make sure that the sheet metal is going to roll in here so I don't have a valley or it doesn't dip down too much. So I want to be able to adjust this flange up and down and get this uh, located just right to where the, the sheet metal just rolls in to this edge right here. Right up here it's, it's pretty good, but down here it's a little high. So I've got to be able to adjust that up and down. The flange also gave me uh, the ability to center this all in the hole three and three quarters down from the top of the roof, that existing edge, and it should be about 12 and a quarter to this uh, leading edge of the deck lid if everything's uh, measured out properly. Uh, naturally, there's a little fudge factor here and there. You just kind of, you know, everything's not 100% perfect. These quarter panels are a little bit different on either side, so. You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, just so that it visually looks right. I think the most important part is that the arc of the rear of the roof matches up. Um, and it does. Um, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll go on from here. Okay, so now you can see this flange has, uh, has screws, one in the top and one in the bottom. Uh, and it's a slotted hole so that I can adjust it up and down to get that... Uh, window uh, bed uh, decked out to where I, the sheet metal uh, makes a good transition. So I've also pre-drilled and primed this uh, so that once I get it into position I'll be able to actually plug weld this flange right to the side there and that'll support the window bed on the sides. Okay with these two tracks fixed where I want them uh, they're not welded in yet uh, just in case I have to do any kind of adjustment. I want to try and test fit the glass in before I finalize those. At any rate, I uh, started with a piece of 035 uh, to cre start creating the substructure to support the upper uh, window bed. So it's just tacked in there lightly and I'm going to drop the, uh, the window track in and trace it out and then I'll start uh, building some supports up there. Okay, so uh, we're just uh, still secured with four screws to the car through these side rails. But I've gone ahead and I've added, this is kind of a reverse of this shape here, to try and uh, you know, add a little strength in this direction here uh, to this um, upper bed. Uh, this is the only place where you really can't tie it you know, vertically, uh, substantially, to strengthen it. What will happen here is, is because I've got this here, once this skin is connected from the existing roof to this track, it'll create a box. And it'll be a compound shape, and that should basically keep take any of the rotation out of it uh, that would be there. Also, once the glass is in there with the urethane, the urethane will basically uh, secure it to the to the glass and stiffen it up. Modern cars, the glass is part of the uh, calculated structure of the car. Uh, on the old cars, it's just usually just set in there. But uh, I'm gonna be using urethane in here, so that'll hold that nicely. Anyway, um, what I have left to do before I can uh, do a test fit on the glass, which is essential to see if anything moved, which they have, things have a tendency to shift around from time to time, is, uh, is I have to put a, uh, uh, a little piece that goes from here down to this Dutchman panel that'll secure it to the bottom there and that'll stiffen up that bottom and keep that um, arc uh, stable in that direction. So also what I've done here is this is that piece of sheet metal that I put in. This creates the bottom boxing to finish out the roof. On my car I took this last, um, there's, a, this, um, there's a roof brace here. I, I cut, because I used the Vega and I wanted a, <clears throat> a better transition than the Vega give, uh, hatch gives you. Um, I basically had cut it all the way out to here, took this and moved it all the way down to just above the glass and then created a large patch for on top here. That's not necessary with this because this fits the roof exactly. So this transition just comes over nicely. At any rate, I'm gonna start making this piece right here and we'll go on from there. Okay, so uh, here's the base piece. It's just screwed to the car right now, but it's welded to the uh, window track in order to keep the uh, window track uh, curve uh, from flattening out. So that's what that looks like. Uh, the next thing I have to do is to fit the window in and make sure everything is looks good there. 
and consistent. It's not rocking up and down in one corner or the other. Uh, sometimes these things will get twisted. Um, I should make sure that it makes contact all the way around the perimeter. And then I can start uh, welding it to the car and um, finishing out the, uh, the outer skin, the upper, the two sides, and then this back piece of uh, metal. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. Okay, so uh, first time in, it was uh, rocking a little bit. This corner was a little low. That corner was a little low, so I raised everything up just a tick over here, probably a sixteenth or so on both sides to get rid of the rock. Also, the flange that I had put in at the top over here pushed this top flange up a little bit too high, so I went around and just put a piece of... Uh, masking tape here and then I went around with a chisel a uh, metal chisel and then I just kind of beat it down so that it actually fits the uh, window bed the original window bed um, on an angle a little bit so it just kind of drives that whole piece of metal down a little bit because it was it was lifting up the center just a little bit so that was causing some of the problems with sitting <clears throat> pretty good right now in here so I feel uh, like I can secure this whole bed in place to the car at this point and um and then move on i got a little trick here try to get it out uh, i've gotten it out once basically this is strapping tape packing tape it has these little fiberglass lines through it so the tear i've got that up underneath the glass here so that i could just pull this back up and out of this hole here anyway um we'll move on from here okay so i've got the sides filled in now uh, with sheet metal it's just everything's just tacked every one inch and wait till I get everything uh, secured before I go around and uh, finish weld this up so I, I don't get uh, anything twisted out of shape um, by heating it up <clears throat> so I'm starting to lay out this uh, lower piece to fill in the bottom from the bottom of the window plug down to the trunk um, it's a little tricky piece because it's it's flattish but it's not completely flat. I've got to wheel this to where it's got a very slight, slight crown, so it doesn't want to, you know, when you lean on it, it doesn't want to re reverse. So, uh, anyway, I'm just getting started with that now, and I'll continue on from here. Okay, so I've uh, run it through the English wheel. I'm trying to raise this area up raise that area up in these corners over here trying to get a little bit more of a shape here and also what i'm trying to do is, is create a little roll in this direction here um, so it has a little strength naturally when you push down on it um, like this so it doesn't want to reverse uh, but you got to be careful not to put too much shape in it or else it looks like you've got a bubble here so what I've had to do is the glass actually has a little bit of a bubble to it, so you don't want to exaggerate that by making it look like a, you know, like a butt cheek, if you will. Anyway, I've drawn a line here across the midpoint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take this shape, the reverse of this shape here, so that I can make a support brace that'll go underneath this. That'll just be, um, I'll put some seam sealer on there when I put this panel down, so that it has a little bit of, a little bit more positive support below. Um, uh, this area here so if you lean on it and you're waxing it you're, you don't actually cave that in it is 035 it's pretty stout and once it's welded up it's a little bit more stout but just uh, just to be safe all right I'm bending up this little template shape here to try and uh, give me a negative of what the brace is going to need to be underneath of this piece so uh, what I've done is um, uh, I'm concentrating on from working from the center mark out and getting the arc of one side and then basically I have a pattern drawn on the bench that I'm going to go to to uh, replicate this side and get this side to match so that we have a symmetrical arc across here uh, it'll take out any of these little irregularities in the panel. All right, while I'm waiting for this uh, primer to dry, this weld through primer and then that self fetching primer, I've gone ahead and uh, started to make the paper pattern for the top closure panel right there. And I'll cut that out of some 035. And uh, as soon as I get this 
other stuff uh, dried up over here. Um, I'll finish working that bottom area and then I'll finish that top out. All right, here's what it looks like with this brace in. This is just uh, 023, but it's been bent on both sides here to create a C channel. And then it's shaped up so that it's just slightly below uh, this uh, rear panel. And I'm gonna put some seam sealer on before I uh, put this piece uh, down and that'll act as a cushion and also a flexible a joint between this pat this and the upper panel so that it can kind of the two of them can kind of move a little bit just like you would do for a uh, uh, reattachment of a, a deck lid or a hood to its substructure so that's what I'm going to do next all right so that's what it's looking like um, all tacked up um, probably going to take the better part of Monday to get this uh, all filled in because uh, you gotta basically skip weld it in order to not st start getting big uh, you know if you lay too much heat to it this will all start puckering and everything so it's a long tedious process of ring around the rosy both for the uh, surround of the actual uh, glass bed and also where it connects to the car anyway um, that's gonna Pretty much wrap up what I have to, to do this week. Uh, one unfortunate thing that happened is I've been uh, hunting and hunting and hunting to get that um, the uh, glass rubber molding that uh, I showed you before that uh, surrounds here. I finally did get it in just the other day, and this is what it looks like. You can see there's a little upstand on there. And that's what sits it up off top of the, off off the bed, and then this little flap here, that that bears against the side of the bed there, and creates the little. It automatically fills the uh, irregular space of about a quarter of an inch. Unfortunately, once I got that and I made up my little sample and set it in the bed over there, I realized I picked the once well, this spot, and also the side glass over here. On the side rail here as you can see this is almost flush and then it tapers down and gets deep here well I knew not to use that but I thought it was uh, more representative on the side here and it turns out that it also tapers so it's about an eighth of an inch down the glass is from the roof here whereas on the side it's about a quarter of an inch down well that's fine it looks good on this car but it's a little bit too deep so I had I have three quarter inch deep sides on this bed so I'm gonna have to take and um, I'm gonna have to build up uh, the uh, pack up the depth of this in order to get this so that it looks right and gets this glass up a little flusher then what's going to be allowed here if I put the glass down in here it's too just too deep um, uh, for my my liking it doesn't look good so I'll have to go back and uh, get three sixteenths inch material because the actual dimension instead of being three quarters of an inch should be seven sixteenths of an inch deep and that's what it is on the top of that uh, windshield uh, to the bottom of the bed at any rate that's uh, going to be it for this week and I appreciate everybody for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one